This video is an intro to using the wall tools in AutoCAD architecture. Now in my intro video, I went through using the tool palette and using the ribbon and how you can get to the tools in either way. Keep in mind the generic wall tool, which simply says wall, um, works fine, but it is a generic construction, meaning it's not going to be specific to concrete block or brick or stud or something like that. It might be a good option for when you're drawing existing walls, especially when you're not sure exactly what the construction of those walls are. So I'm going to start with that, and then we'll talk about specific uh, tools on the Walls tab and uh, how those are different than the generic tool. So I want to click my Wall tool here on the Tool Palette and click a Start Point and then an End Point. In that sense, it's the same as drawing a line. So during that process, I could have typed in a distance that I wanted the line to go, or the wall to go. So I can uh, guide my mouse in the direction and type in my 20 feet, for example, if I want that wall to be 20 feet long. And then I can continue around, you know, in whatever shape I want. And just like with lines, if I want to close the loop, I can also type C for close. And then that will finish the loop, meaning the uh, building is now a closed perimeter. So in that sense, it's the same as drawing a line in the general basic process. O-snaps, polar, ortho, all those things work exactly the same way. So what's different about a wall, if you select one that you've already drawn, uh, let's talk about the grips for a minute. And you'll notice there's a lot more grips than what you have on a line. There's two grips at each end. The triangle grip at the end allows you to lengthen or shorten the wall without changing the angle. And many times that's very handy. For example, if I want the end of this wall to be vertically aligned with the end of the corner down here, all I need to do is grab that triangle grip and then pick the O-snap of the corner, and it will immediately align. And there was no way for me to script the angle because I used the triangle grip, which only will lengthen or shorten. And now on the other hand, the square grip at the end works the same as the grip on the end of a line. It allows me to change the angle or the length so I can now put that end point anywhere that I want. So I can put it back there if I want to put it back where it was originally. So that's the same on the other end as well. Then we have three grips at the midpoint of the wall. The, uh, the arrow grip will flip the wall's control edge back and forth. And I'll talk about what that is in a few minutes. The square grip at the midpoint allows you to actually move the wall. And one thing you'll notice as you move this, especially if you move it in a direction like what I'm doing, is the walls understand that you want them to be clean corners. So first, you'll notice that the corners look pretty good from when I drew it the first time, and I didn't do anything to do that. That was automatic. But now as I move that wall up and down, it's automatically pulling the endpoints of the other walls so that they stay in a nice, clean corner configuration. So the walls are a little more intelligent in that way. <clears throat> Now the uh, little triangle grip there at the midpoint allows you to change the thickness of the wall. And you can also type in distances as you do this. So if I grab that grip and pull it down and I know that I want to add six inches to the thickness, I can type that and now I've added six inches to the thickness. Um, but in general, that's your thickness grip. Now this is true only for specific types of walls that are not tied to specific construction methods and materials. In other words, if I use one of those walls that is 8-inch uh, CMU, then the thickness is driven by how that wall is constructed. So then I don't have the grip. It doesn't show up. Um, but this is kind of the generic wall, so it gives me the grip and allows me to change the thickness. Now, because of the complexity of walls, your properties palette is going to be much more valuable now than what it was in regular AutoCAD. So let's look at that for a minute. First thing you'll notice is that the wall is already on a layer, and that layer is called a wall. So intelligent objects in AutoCAD architecture use what are called layer keys to automatically assign layers so that as you draw, you don't have to worry about it. And compared to regular AutoCAD, that's a great thing, right? One less thing to think about. So the layers usually are named kind of with a standard procedure of a prefix for the discipline, like A for architecture, and then uh, after that, a more specific um, suffix for what the object is. So you'll have a door, a glazing, a wall, etc. The style that's listed there 
is the specific type of wall that was used when I used that generic tool. So just like with dimension style, text style, etc., the style is what's dictating the graphics of the wall and the behavior of the wall. So the standard style means that it's the generic tool. Um, the other important things that I'll talk about now are the width. Like I said, this one has flexible width, so I can type in something here, and that's the same as using the grip. But there are times when this is easier because I may not be sure what the width is assigned without uh, coming over here to look at it. So that's an easy thing to change right there. And the other thing is the height. So you have to keep in mind that you are drawing in 3D. This is a three-dimensional uh, wall that I have selected here. So that height then is the Z direction. It's 10 feet high, kind of coming out of the screen at me. So if I go to an isometric view on my view cube there, then you can see there are my three-dimensional walls. The other thing you'll notice is that your ribbon is context sensitive. So as long as you have a wall selected, then it's going to show you options for the wall and what you can do with it. And that's true for a lot of the other objects in AutoCAD architecture as well. So those are some of the basic important things here in the properties palette. You will also notice a little lower that there's rotation. So just like with a line, that tells you the angle. And the elevation is the height of the bottom of the wall off the ground, basically, or your zero in the Z direction. So the fact that that says zero means that uh, it's drawn at the first floor and on the zero point uh, in my Z axis is the, where the base of the wall is sitting right now. So those are uh, some important fundamental ideas of drawing walls with that generic tool. Now there's one more very important thing to talk about with that, and that is how do we control where the thickness goes? Because you didn't have to worry about this um, as much when you're drawing with a regular line, right? But if you are drawing a plan and this wall has thickness, you have to keep in mind what side of your mouse cursor that thickness is going. So if I draw the wall in a direction going up on the screen, you can see my cursor has the little box there that shows me the angle and the length, and it says justify left. So that's telling me that my mouse is controlling the left side of the wall. And this is especially important if you think about drawing a floor plan kind of in a loop shape, right? If I'm controlling the left side of the wall and I'm trying to match a uh, plan that has specific dimensions or I'm trying to draw a room that's 20 feet by 20 feet. So if I go this way and do 20 and then I go up and do 20 and then I go over and do 20 and then I can close. Now if I do the distance command and measure the outside of that plan it's not 20 it's 21 and that's because my wall is six inches thick and I have an additional six inches on the top and additional six inches on the bottom. And that's because I was controlling the left side, which ended up being the interior face of my building here. So if I'm trying to make the outside of the building 20, then I either need to control the opposite side, or I can draw in the opposite direction in terms of clockwise versus counterclockwise. So this is a very important thing to keep in mind as you're drawing with the wall tools, is think about where's that thickness going relative to the dimensions that I'm drawing at. So if I'm drawing up, that's the easiest way to see your justification because your mouse has control of the left side when your justification is left. Now if I draw to the right, it still says justify left. So you have to kind of put yourself uh, in your mind at the start point of the wall and look down the wall as you draw. And then you can see you're still justified on the left. And then if I go even down on the monitor, see if you glance at the monitor, it looks like I'm controlling the right side of the wall, but if you put yourself at the start point and look down the wall as you draw, then it's still the left side. So as you draw, you can either draw in the direction clockwise versus counterclockwise that will work with your justification, or you can tap the shift key and that flips you between left justify, center justify, and right justify. So now if I wanted to draw in this direction, then I could do that. Now, another important thing to keep in mind is when you're working with walls that are asymmetrical in terms of the construction. For example, a CMU8 with furring. See, 
if I draw one of these real quick, you can see there's eight inches of block with a hatch, and then I have space for furring, and then I have gypsum board. So I'm going to want to put the gypsum board on the interior of the building. That's common sense, right, construction-wise. So that's going to be more specific. I have to be more specific about how I draw with this. I can't draw, in this case, in a counterclockwise direction because now my gypsum board is on the outside of the building. And that's not good. So you have to then start your command. And then I can flip my justification to the outside. And then now I can draw in a clockwise direction and my jet board is going to the interior. So you have to get used to being conscious of which side of the wall are you controlling in terms of the justification and in terms of is it a wall construction that is more important for you to put one side on the interior and one side on the exterior because it's asymmetrical. So that's the basics of drawing with walls. Um, the other wall tools here all work in the same way. Uh, if you do use the specific construction tools here, like CMU8 furring or brick or any of these, just a reminder that there is no width adjustment. It's grayed out, and that's because it's built into the style. So I'll get into editing the style in a more advanced video. This just gives you the basics of how to draw with these wall tools. So a couple other important points as you draw with these. So you can always tell when you look at the grips of the wall which side is the justification edge because that's the side where all the grips are kind of lined up on it. So if you need to flip a wall you can now use that arrow to reverse the direction and you can see how the wall is staying in the same spot but the arrow is flipping my interior versus my exterior. So if you have a wall that's wrong or needs to be changed that's an easy fix. Now, on the other hand, in the Properties palette, you can go over here and see a justification, left, center, right, and baseline. Baseline, basically, um, is going to be similar to either left, center, or right. It depends on how the wall is constructed in the style. So you can also change this here, the justification. So if you go from left to right, notice what happens. The grips are staying in the same location but the actual thickness of the wall is flip-flopping from one side to the other. So the grips are staying in the same spot and the wall's thickness is moving back and forth. So changing the justification in the properties palette is not exactly the same as changing it with the grip here, the arrow grip. Sometimes you want to do one, sometimes you want to do the other. When you use the arrow grip, you are keeping the justification on the same side of the wall, meaning it's on the block exterior face. You can see the gypsum board is flipping back and forth, but the justification stays on the block side away from the gyp board. When you change it here, you're actually changing it, the justification from the block side to the gyp board side. So there's two different fixes there if you have to fix a wall, depending on what you want to do. Most of the time you want to leave your justification around the outside um, because it's a little easier to get your walls to work well together. So when I say that, I mean if you're connecting walls together, you want to start your wall at the end point of a previous wall. So when you select those two walls, you want those square grips to be stacked one on top of the other. That's the proper way to draft your wall. So then you wouldn't start your wall on the interior corner right there. See it doesn't clean up properly. You need to stack the square grips and that means being consistent with your justification and normally on the outside. Now if you have a T intersection the same kind of rules apply. If I pull this grip back so that this uh, intersects with the interior face uh, the walls are pretty intelligent. It doesn't want to go to the interior face because it kind of recognizes that that's the wrong way to do it. Um, but sometimes it's possible to make it wrong um, on accident. So you want the endpoint of this horizontal wall to go all the way to the justification edge of the wall that it's meeting. 
So in this case, if this wall was going to that direction, then you can see how this wall shortened itself so that the end grip of the horizontal wall is on the justification edge of the vertical wall. So when you have T intersections, that's the proper way to make that intersection work. Even if you have like an angled corner, you still stack the endpoints. If you have three walls intersecting together, you still want to stack the endpoints if at all possible.